business. So let's talk a little bit more about the difference between those two. As we, as we look at a business service, these are services that are known to your customers. And, and, and it's very obvious to them uh, if, if you ask them, you know, that they, what, what is a service that you use, a point of sale system would be an example of that. Um, in addition to that, uh, these business services should describe how each service enables business and provides value. So that is important, and that's really, again, all the customers caring of, they, that they care about is which ones provide business value and which ones, which services enable uh, them to conduct business. We should also identify service owners that um, are related to the service and the support organization. So in our business catalog, our business service catalog, we, it should be very clear to the customer who is responsible for delivering the service, what other related services are also uh, needed in order for that service to be enabled, and in addition to that, who is the support organization and what is the, uh, what is the level of support that is provided. And most importantly, the, the elements in this business service catalog should be written using business language, using language that the customer can understand. Again, they don't care that, um, that there is you know, a, a cluster of SQL servers that's supporting a database for their application. That's not relevant to them. What is relevant to them is that the data in those databases are available to them when they need that and when they need to access it. So we need to make sure that the language that we're utilizing is relevant to the business and that they can understand that. Also, we should be documenting what SLAs, so this is the level of commitment to our customers. And these, for the most part, should be generic uh, in, in terms of what is the level of service that, that is provided in the support uh, arrangements. And to come up with those SLAs, it's going to be important that we actually communicate and work with our customers to establish those SLAs. In a, in a business service catalog, we should also ideally publish this to a web or some type of a portal. We need to make it available to our customers. If it's not available to them, then they don't know, again, what services that we offer as a service organization. I think um, here in this next, this final, or next to the last bullet is a very important point that each business service should support one of the following functions. And if you look at businesses, they really do these five key things. We create, design, develop, and acquire products and services. We market and sell those services. Uh, are the services used in terms of, del or we, we deliver those products and services, and we support. And then ultimately, we manage a corporate infrastructure such as finance, HR, and facilities. So. When, when developing your service catalog, these are the five areas that uh, those, the, those list of services should address, one of those five. Also, uh, I'll say that the business service catalog is often going to be viewed as a business, uh, a critical business enablement tool, meaning that this is what they are concerned about. They're not concerned necessarily about the technical services. They leave those up to the IT organization to develop, uh, to, to manage those. They're focused on, uh, on the actual business value that it's going to bring. So point being is, is that um, when, whenever we're, we identify those, make sure that the, the services that, in your, that are in your business service catalog are considered to be relevant to the business and critical to the business. Moving on to a technical service catalog. So here, uh, this contains, uh, these are the contents that are not necessarily visible to our business customers. They are, you know, however, things that IT is very familiar with in terms of security, in terms of uh, storage, and in, in those things, right? So again, the technical services are often very important 
to the IT organization and, and usually when you begin the, the, the path of, of developing your service catalog, those are usually the first services that are identified. But the point is, is that <clears throat> these are not visible necessarily to the business. Um, they don't uh, they don't see or, or recognize these on a regular you know on a regular basis. In addition to that, it describes uh, the, the technical service catalog describes the indirect value that it provides to the business. So what we're getting at is identifying these technical services that ultimately support our business service. Identifying service owners, again, this is going to be important, just as we would with our business services. We need to identify the individuals that are ultimately responsible for these services. So that is a critical uh, element, as well as the technical service catalog should any, any agreement that we have in terms of our OLAs should ultimately support what we have agreed upon with our customer, that being the, our, our service level agreements. So uh, with that being said, some of the challenges of starting with a service catalog. It's very common because, again, as IT folks, we're very comfortable with technology, and that's where we live and breathe. And so a lot of organizations will often want to start with a technical service catalog. I would discourage that. Again, one, the primary reason is, is that the business, catalog, business service catalog is going to be perceived by the business as bringing value. The technical catalog, well, it's just another widget. It's just another widget that manages other widgets. And so at that point, uh, I, I would strongly encourage you to start with your business catalog. But challenges that you might encounter if you do choose to start with your technical service catalog is that one, it's going to have less, less business visibility. Um, two, it's going to be much more complex. So when you start having discussions, about uh, network versus remote access versus VPN, you know, those types of discussion, it's a much more complex discussion to have. And so it's, it's a lot easier to, to bite your teeth into a business service catalog first and foremost. In addition to that, should we, have, uh, we should have a well-developed CMDB in order to adequately, adequately develop our technical service catalog. So that in itself is a huge undertaking and that can be a, 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 you know, a significant project, but the reality is in order to identify those services, we need to have a very clear picture of what that CMDB is and the contents of that CMDB before we can do that successfully. In addition to that, um, as I mentioned before, this is often used, uh, viewed as a utility uh, for IT, and it doesn't, it's not viewed as a business tool that's allowing IT to better provide and support, um, support biz the business. So moving on from the, the definite, our, you know, information from as it relates to technical versus business, uh, there's this, you know, all service catalogs are not equal, meaning that um, when you develop your service catalog, you're, you're typically going to come up with a list of services that you provide. Now, you have the option of delivering that simply as a list, and as we talked about, we do want to publish this to the business. Now, on the other hand, um, we can make that service catalog actionable. And what we're really talking about at that point is creating an environment where customers can per purchase services and they can see what the services are and understand what the services are versus just simply seeing a list. So I think this really illustrates, and if you can tell the monitor on the right, uh, that's an Amazon that's an Amazon web page, and that's essentially what we're trying to create with an actionable service catalog. Internally, we want our customers to be able to go and shop and view the services that we offer. So here again, we can see some of the, uh, the, the differences between an actionable, actionable versus a static service catalog. One of those being that an actionable catalog is role-driven, meaning 
that we can, based upon who the individual is and what their role is, will determine what services that they ultimately can see and what they have access to do, right? In addition to that, ease of use. So an, an actionable catalog should be um, easy to use, not only as a customer, but, but from the perspective of the administrators uh, keeping the service catalog published and available to our end user community. Real-time ordering. Again, a static catalog is nothing more than a list, which is perfect fine, um, but if you, again, to be perceived as bringing more value, actionable catalogs allow individuals to go to a website, order new services, or request changes to existing services that they might have. Also, a, an actionable catalog introduces workflow capability. So not only can we request that service, but we can manage the workflow associated with fulfilling that service. And again, now you can begin to see where the, the word actionable, where it's coming into play and why we would use that for that type of a catalog. Integration with other systems, again, we would expect that with an actionable service catalog. So uh, as an example, if we're requesting a new employee to start next week, well, it would be wonderful if that actionable service catalog not only handled the initial request, but at the same time uh, cre automatically created the Active Directory account that was necessary to uh, set that new employee up. So with an actionable service catalog, not only are you able to build complex and, and sophisticated workflow processes, but you're, you have the ability of, of, of introducing a number of efficiencies and improvements and reduce the number of manual processes that you might currently have. An actionable service catalog would also uh, allow allow you to, ma uh, to make changes to that workflow very easily through a WYSIWYG utility. And in addition to that, an actionable service catalog fulfills those other idle disciplines such as uh, request management, service portfolio management, uh, finan financial management, and SLAs. So what, what exactly is the value of an actionable service catalog over simply a static service catalog? Well, actionable means that the customers are able to shop those services uh, through, through the catalog. In addition to that, customers are able to provide all the required information up front of a request. And in turn, what we're doing is reducing that back and forth communication that normally happens Instead of just sending in an incident, as an example, to or a request record to IT, we're able to collect all the necessary information up front through a nice web interface. And again, we're reducing the amount of back and forth that happens um, on, on the back side of just a simple request. And ultimately, what does that mean? Well, it means a better experience for the customer because we're able to deliver those services more more quickly and efficiently, and it's also good for the bottom line because it's, again, more efficient, so we're reducing the cost associated with delivering that service. 